Hey, welcome in to Let's Talk, Honest Conversation for Authentic People. And my name is Scott, and I started Let's Talk a while back. Haven't posted much here on YouTube. I do post my podcast episodes on my Substack page. But today, I have a question for pastor search committees. Because I have been interviewed over the years. I've been in pastoral ministry for about 22 and a half years, 13 as an associate pastor, and then nine and a half years as a quote unquote lead pastor or senior pastor or just the pastor. And I wanted to do today's episode and really challenge pastor search committees. You're out there, you're looking for a pastor. Your, your pastor has either been called by God to move on or he's resigned in frustration or you guys have fired him. And so now it's time to find somebody new. Now, I've interviewed a lot over the years. And one question that comes out to me from a pastor search committee is this. What are you going to do to grow the church? Let me say that again. A question that I've been asked in multiple interviews is this. What are you going to do, Pastor, to grow our church? Well, let me bring up a slide that I made right here. So this is usually my response to that question. And this is what I want to challenge a pastor search committee if you if you're listening to this and you are on a search committee or your church is currently looking for a pastor and you want to pass this on, I would greatly appreciate it because here's my question or quote unquote, my answer to that question. Where will your new people come from? Especially now. Especially after all, uh, all the COVID years and a lot of people left the church due to fear of COVID or anger over over COVID or just was looking for a reason to stop going to church, and so COVID became that reason. You see, where are you going to get your people from now? Where are your people going to come from? Where are your new people going to come from? Are they going to come from your community? Uh, who's going to do it? And I'm going to park right there just for a second because clearly committees ask pastoral candidates, how are you going to go to church? How are you going to grow the church, or what are you going to do to grow it? Well, let me ask you a question. If you're asking a candidate that question already, I don't believe you really want your church to grow. Because if you wanted your church to grow, you'd already be doing whatever to get people to come to your church. Whether that be evangelism, an outreach group, Do you have an outreach group already in place? Because, see, when I hear the question, Pastor, what are you going to do to grow our church? A red flag goes up. I hear we're not doing anything, and we haven't done anything for a while, and we really don't want to do anything. That's why we want to hire you. Because, you see, we want our church to have a lot of people in it. We just don't want to do anything about it. That's what I hear. And I guarantee you, if I'm hearing it, other candidates are hearing that question as well. How many other churches are around you? If you want your church to grow, and I hate to use this word, but it's the only word that really comes to mind, what's your competition around you? Are there other, if you're an SBC church, I'm SBC, been SBC my whole life. There are tons of SBC churches around the church I serve now. Tons. And we live in a small area. Our area is over-churched greatly, vastly over church. I mean, you can throw a rock and hit a church where I live. It's insane. But how many other churches are around you? And what are they doing that you're not? And then, fourthly, what's your church's reputation in your community? I'm going to say something that's going to sound really harsh, but it rings true, though. Have you ever thought that people don't want to come to your church? Maybe your church has a bad reputation. Maybe you're not friendly. Maybe you're not welcoming. And I'm not talking about welcoming in the sense where you just let sin go. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about maybe you're just not friendly. Um, Maybe maybe you had a bad pastoral experience 
and that pastor soured other people in your community on your church. It's hard to overcome a bad reputation. I mean, I pastor a church, been here for nine and a half years. Uh, the guy before me, him and his wife, had an ugly divorce, a nasty split, and it was very toxic for the church, and the church split multiple times, and the church got a bad rap, bad rep in the community, and it's never recovered at all. You know? Um, so th that's just something for you to think about. Where will your new people come from? Because when you ask me in an interview, what are you going to do to grow to church? You're already telling me that you're not doing anything on your own to try to go out and reach people for Jesus. You're not doing anything already. And you don't care to or you would be doing it. And I'm not trying to sound mean or harsh, but that's just the truth of the matter. Who's going to do it? If you expect a pastor, a new pastor, to come in with a wife and, and we'll just say me, three kids and you're expecting that to ignite some kind of spark or whatever, you're, you're delusional. You're just delusional. God grows His church, and I think that's the biggest problem. We've forgotten that the church is the Lord's, not ours. I mean, I've, I've heard over the years as an associate and as a pastor, somebody say, you know, this is my church. And see, that's the problem. People get in the, the mentality that it's their church and it's not the Lord's. The church is made up of people who are born again by the blood of Jesus. That's the church. That's the church. People who are saved, who are blood-bought, born again by Christ. That's your church right there. Your church is not anybody that walks through the, through the door and decides to walk down an aisle and fill out a form. Your church is people who are saved, who are born again. And I hope I'm getting through to somebody, please, because there's I could probably do a segment once a day on questions that have been asked, that I've been asked at, in an interview by church committee, because you know what you're doing, right? So when you're asking questions to us, I would say 80% of those questions that are being asked, it's what the last pastor didn't do or didn't do well, or is perceived not doing or done well. That That's the questions that are being asked right there, in a nutshell. Those are the majority of your your interview questions. It's the whatever the last guy didn't or didn't do. And um, don't be surprised, you know, when a pastor will come back and ask you hard-hitting questions. I think one of my favorite questions to ask, and I like to ask it to see the body language on people's faces, is uh, tell me about the troublemakers in your church. You see that one right there. When you ask that question to a committee and they all kind of stare at each other, because every church has got them. And if you say that you don't, well, either you're lying or you're delusional too. Every church has got somebody that loves to make trouble and nothing's ever done about it. And that's another, that's another episode for another time. But, you see, search committees, please, take the time to really think through what you're going to ask your candidates. I mean, seriously, take the time. Because we're not the saviors of your church. New people aren't going to come flocking through the door for a new pastor. That's not how this works, especially now in today's church world. So... I hope this helps somebody. I hope this blessed somebody. Um, if it has, uh, please hit the like button and um, you know share it if you want to. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I'm just trying to. I'm just getting this thing really uh, off the ground now. So I look forward to doing many more episodes. And I pray that you guys have a blessed day. And until next time, let's talk.